most severe type of two-car crash is the head-on collision. The speed at impact is the combined speed of the two vehicles, and they both stop instantly. Where the collision is not exactly head-on, one or both vehicles may spin after impact, throwing unrestrained occupants around inside or ejecting them through windows and burst doors onto the roadway. More people have been killed or injured in the crushing impact of a head-on collision than in any other type of accident. In normal traffic and under normal conditions, there should be no reason for a head-on collision, even though the passing cars are often only four feet apart. The rule is, keep to the left and you'll be okay. But it's often difficult to observe this simple rule because there are many things that can distract a driver and lead to a head-on collision. You're driving along, you feel hungry. Your concentration is off the road for only a few seconds and before you know it, you're over the center line. These things can happen to any of us, but there's only one place to deal with them, and that's not behind the wheel. The defensive driver realizes that he must concentrate always. So, all right, you've learnt the value of staying in full control of your vehicle all of the time. But what about full control of yourself? Other causes of the head-on crash are going to sleep at the wheel. Now this may be through fatigue or a combination of engine drone, heat and visual monotony called highway hypnosis. Alcohol is another factor. Impaired judgment and sluggish reactions endanger not only the life of the drinking driver, but also the lives of innocent road users. The defensive driver is always mentally and physically fit to drive. But assuming you can control yourself and your car, what happens when suddenly another driver swerves over to your side of the road? Is there any defense? Let's study the situation. You're in the orange car. The white car swings over to your side. What's your solution? Some drivers might be tempted to escape to the right. Don't. When the driver of the white car realizes he's on the wrong side, he will instinctively veer back to his lane. And if you're on the right, you'll be heading straight for him. Look for an escape to the left. Reduce speed and warn the oncoming driver with horn or lights. If he keeps coming, pull over to the left, even if it means running completely off the road. Better this than this. Beware of the driver who turns across oncoming traffic. He made a bad decision. But you, as the driver of the dark car, could have prevented the accident. Turning vehicles are always a hazard. So when you saw this one, you should have checked the road behind rested your foot lightly on the brake, then if he attempted to turn, you would have had enough time to brake and allow him to pass safely. A near miss, but not a head-on collision. Now, let's see what the other driver should do. There's the intersection ahead. He checks his mirror, signals, and moves into the right lane. He pulls up, keeping his wheels straight so that if he is hit from behind, he won't be pushed into the path of oncoming traffic. He waits for the traffic to clear and then makes his turn. 
Another potential accident situation is when two cars approach each other on a curve. A car could quite easily be involved in a head-on collision because forces other than those directed through the steering wheel will influence its course. A fundamental law of motion dictates that the mass must continue to move in a straight line and the squeal of tires is a sign that the car is being driven too fast. When the front wheels change the direction of the vehicle, centrifugal force takes over and tries to propel the vehicle off the curve. In a left-hand curve, this means you could drift across the centre line into the path of oncoming traffic. On a right-hand curve, you could run off the road and in attempting to regain control, veer into approaching traffic. The key is to control your speed. Slow down on the straight before entering the curve. Steer into the curve and then gradually accelerate out. This will give you control, stability and traction. If possible, straighten out the curve. In a left curve, start towards the outer limit of your lane. Move to the inside of the apex of the curve, then out again. The same applies to a right-hand curve. This widens the radius of the curve, reduces centrifugal force and extends your field of vision. Above all, reduce speed before entering the curve. Know the line you're going to take, steer confidently into the curve and accelerate gently out of it. On curves, remain alert for signs of overcompensation or recklessness by others. To avoid the head-on collision requires knowledge, alertness, judgment, foresight and skill. All of the elements of the defensive driver. Thank you.